In tonight's segment from Dorchester, we look at stories on school reopening and the primary vote for state representative. Uh, joining us is the managing editor and publisher of the Dorchester Reporter, Bill Forey. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Bill. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. You know, I know there are a lot of public school students in, in Dorchester, but you also have, I think, three Catholic schools or at least three locations, and they have some reopening questions to settle as well. So what's going on there? Yeah, it's a, it's a different story. You know, of course, BPS remains sort of in, in planning process. Um, they, uh, the public school system has until Friday to, to offer its, its final um, set of plans to the state regulators. Um, but the Catholic schools uh, are, are, also, are already kind of set their plan in motion. There's actually four uh, physical school buildings um, in Dorchester. Uh, one of them is, a, is independently run called uh, St. Brendan's Elementary. And then uh, the St. John Paul II Catholic Academy has three locations, in, uh, one in Neponset, one in uh, Columbia Road, and the other in Lower Mills. And so those four are all planning to go um, back to school daily if, if, if parents and, and their kids want to be in a classroom. They will have five day a week um, uh, session planned for beginning in September. Actually, St. Brendan's would start on August 31st. So we talked to the uh, administrators there this week, and they explained that they surveyed their, their parents and found that in the case of St. John Paul II, about 52% of parents indicated that they would like to send their children back into a classroom setting this fall. Uh, at St. Brendan, it was a much larger figure, about 90% uh, roughly wanted to be back in the classroom. So what the administrators at both schools have decided to do is make it optional. So parents uh, are asked to let them know whether or not they intend to come back with their children uh, for in-class um, five day a week uh, session or to stay at home and, and learn remotely. And uh, that flexibility uh, can be exercised, obviously uh, over the next week or so, pe people will be asked to make that call. And um, the, the teachers and the faculty at, at, at these schools will have to um, both run in, uh, you know, a, a, the traditional in-class um, instruction and, um, you know, manage a, a remote learning uh, system. So that's, that's a lot to ask. And they're training uh, faculty at both schools um, right now. Uh, they obviously had experience in doing Zoom, like kind of based, um, instruction in the spring, but uh, this will be more because they, they will actually have children returning to classes. And um, Kate Branley, who's the administrator of St. John Paul II Catholic Academy, told me um, that they, they're just going to be flexible here. If parents decide to send their children and then decide that it's not, they're not comfortable with it, they can just learn from home if they choose. Um, they estimate that roughly half of the parents will send start the school year with their kids in class. Um, they'll have to wear a mask. Um, there will be extra sanitation and, and custodial work done throughout the day and every night. But um, they won't be doing what BPS is doing. Apparently, the hybrid model where children can come in two days a week and then learn the rest of the week from home. So it's, it, it is a hybrid model that the Catholic schools are, are using, but with much more of an in in-house uh, option. I want to ask you about another school-related uh, decision that came up. The Boston School Committee recently decided to uh, allow for a youth sports and recreation facility to be built on public school property next to the McCormick School uh, near Columbia Point. And this was controversial, uh, either because of the process or who was going to benefit from it. So uh, take us down that path. Sure. So. Um, Three years ago, the school committee um, decided to, to put out for bid, essentially, put out a request for proposals for uh, some parcels next to the McCormick School that are now used essentially as playing fields, um, outdoor uh, amenities for the school. And the, um, there's varying opinions on how well used it is. Obviously, through, through parts of the year, it's not well used because it's too cold or there's snow cover. Um, but the school community does use these fields, and um, 
there was some controversy, even at the idea of, of seeking out a private partnership, which is what has happened here. Um, the RFP that was issued was only answered by one respondent, and that is a partnership between the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dorchester and the Martin Richard Foundation, both obviously very well respected and uh, um, well loved, really, uh, Dorchester organizations that decided to team up and uh, have proposed building a $30 million field house, um, which would be an indoor, as you said, sports facility and community center programmed by the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dorchester. Now, they already have a presence here. This is on Mount Vernon Street, by the way, which is on Columbia Point, across from the Harbor Point um, uh, apartment community. And um, the Boys and Girls Club of Dorchester already have a facility on, uh, in the Harbor Point area. Um, it's called the, uh, the Denny Center, and they, they've been running that for about 20 years. So they already have a, you know, a footprint in this community. They already work with a lot of the kids there. And, and, and a number of the kids who go to the McCormick Endeavor schools are part of that programming as well. So it is kind of a, a, a there is already a synergy there uh, in the neighborhood. What's been controversial, however, is that many of the stakeholders at the McCormick school, teachers mainly, but also students, uh, have been vocal in opposing the idea of losing their outdoor playing fields. Because if this project does go forward, it will be built on what is now their outdoor, essentially, playground. Um, the argument for it has been, I, I think, compelling as well, that this will be a year-round facility, which will prime, the, basically the, the, the population that it's geared for are the kids who are at the McCormick and the Dever School, as well as the kids who live at Harbor Point and other parts of Dorchester who don't have an indoor sports facility of anything like this. Actually, uh, the proponents say it'll be, you know, the best uh, facility of its kind in Boston. Most of the facilities like this you, you see in you know, wealthier uh, suburban communities. Um, so this will be a place where, where city kids, uh, kids from our community will be able to use this. Uh, it can also be used um, potentially by, uh, by other groups that may wanna rent it out for practices when it's not being used by the kids. So um, all of this came to a head last week, Chris, and the school committee uh, in a very narrow vote it was a vote of three to two with two abstentions, which is rather unusual as well. And, a, and kind of a fierce debate uh, preceded this vote um, with many of the uh, stakeholders from the McCormick and from Harbor Point arguing against it. And then others, um, mainly folks who were involved with the Boys and Girls Clubs and, and their allies saying, no, this is, this is a good project. Um, so it did pass, it will go forward. The next step will be uh, the drafting of a lease agreement that we expect uh, to see sometime in the, in the coming weeks. And then there'll be a public process around how this building will actually take form, how it'll be programmed. It, it'll be uh, through the BPDA, the Article 80 process for a large project. And um, I wouldn't expect to see any actual building there for a couple of years, but um, you should expect that there will be more debate and, and probably some compromise ahead on how um, the school community will use this facility. Well, uh, turning to another topic, uh, there's a race for state representative coming up because the incumbent's not running for re-election in parts of Dorchester and Mattapan. And uh, there is what we would have before thought of as highly unusual, a forum in a parking lot. How did that go? It went, it went fine. Um, this was held last uh, Thursday by the Ashmont Adams Neighborhood Association. Um, it's the only uh, in-person, you know, candidates, meet the candidates forum that, that we know of that, that's happened. There's been a number here in the 12th Suffolk District, which is the, the seat now held by Dan Cullinane, um, who decided not to run for re-election this year. And so the, the three remaining candidates um, who, are, who are actually um, actively campaigning, there's, there's four people on the ballot. Um, their names are Cam Charbonnier, uh, Stephanie Everett, uh, Brandy Fluker Oakley and uh, Javon Lissette. Uh Cam Charbonnier has, has suspended his campaign, but will still be on people's ballots. Um, but the three candidates came to that parking lot um, last Thursday and spoke to um, basically uh, 30 or 40 people who set up folding chairs of their own. They get to bring your own chair. Um, you know, it looked like uh, might have been from Tinian Ann Beach or, uh, or Malibu Beach when they were last used. And they just set up um, in, a, in the parking lot, plenty of room 
the candidates got up and spoke one by one on issues. Um, they basically gave their stump speech and they took questions. So um, it, it was a nice evening and uh, the candidates, I think, uh, enjoyed finally being able to get in front of voters instead of in front of the screen like we're doing right now. Yeah. I'm also interested in a couple of stories you had about um, mainly housing development. We, we've seen things about downtown that are being scaled back or, or being put on hold, or at least are on a long track. But you have one thing I think that's, that's in the works right now, and another one that's being planned near Ashmont Station. So it looks like some parts of the housing market are still pretty strong. Yes. So in the last week, there have been uh, two new filings for projects, one at South Bay, which we knew was coming, uh, about 250 unit apartment and condo mix uh, along just next to South Bay Mall. So another phase of, of development there with some more retail included, by the way. Um, that's a pretty big project. We knew it was coming. There was like a letter of notification before COVID hit, but this has been now the main filing. Uh, also new in the last week is a uh, 28 unit apartment complex uh, pitched for um, uh, close to close to Ashmont, a few blocks from Ashmont Station. Uh, on Dorchester Ave. That is a new project. Um, there's also, there was a meeting this week that the BPDA hosted for a project that's kind of been in progress uh, at the, uh, on Morrissey Boulevard by the old um, Freeport Tavern, the old Colony House, which has uh, been, been closed since 2017. That's a big project, uh, about 250 units. So there is activity happening again. Again, it's, it's happening virtually with meetings um, and we are covering them at, at dotnews.com. Um, people can check it out there, but most of this are projects that were already in the works um, and, and just got delayed or shelved during the COVID um, uh, peak here in Boston and uh, are starting to come back into the public frame again now here in the fall. I want to trouble you for one footnote to our topic uh, around the, the land near the McCormick School and the Youth uh, Recreation Center. Uh, Boston City Councilor Frank Baker came out and took a strong position. So what, what did he say exactly? Yeah, well, Councilor Baker um, of late has been, has been writing um, opinion articles and submitting them to our, our newspaper, The Reporter, uh, periodically on topics that he cares about. And this week he cares very much about defending the land lease agreement that uh, the school committee approved. And in particular, defending the concept uh, of this indoor sports facility. He really takes issue with the critique that it's a land grab, that somehow it's going to disadvantage um, people in our neighborhood to have this um, state-of-the-art facility. It makes a pretty strong case um, that uh, an indoor sports facility of this kind would be very useful in, in this part of the world. Um, but he also, um, you know, it, it somewhat dismisses uh, some of the criticism as being un, uninformed and, um, uh, and also takes, takes a strike at a few of his colleagues who on the city council joined into the debate last week and, and were very, uh, in, in his view, were kind of grandstanding on the issue. I think they would push back pretty hard and I expect they will on his interpretation of that. I do think that there are some legitimate concerns on both sides of that issue, but uh, to, to Councillor Baker's credit, um, he put, he's put those thoughts into writing and, and people can read it online at dotnews.com. 